Hello everybody and welcome to Black Star Potential. My name is Lee Fuge and I'm here with MGRmusic.com and today we're going to learn how to play five classic rock riffs and dial in some suitable tones using the Black Star Silverline standard. All the riffs that you're going to learn in this lesson use just three chords, G major, D major and C major. First of all, let's take a quick look at the chords. The G major is going to be played like this. We're also doing a variation on this in one of the songs where we play it without the note on the A string played. So it's played with the A string muted, so you take your first finger off like so. The D chord is going to be played like this. And the C chord is going to be played like this. We're going to combine these three chords with a bunch of techniques from string picking to hammer-ons, pull-offs and string bends to create these five cool riffs. All of the tones that you hear in this video are inspired by the original artist's recordings. They're all dialed in using the Black Star Silverline standard. If you like the tones, you can go over to the Black Star Insider community online and download the tones from blackstarinsider.co.uk. There will also be a link to the tones in the description below. First riff we're going to learn is by The Clash and it's a track called Should I Stay or Should I Go? Here's the riff at full speed. So this riff uses just two of the chords, the D and the G. This is straight eighth notes, but we're not playing on the first beat. We're starting on the and. So you do two hits of the D chord and two. On the and of two, we're playing the G, B and E strings as an open as we transition into the G, which comes in on the three. The G is played on the three and four, and then we hit those three open strings again on the and of four, and then we hit another D on the one of the next bar. The second, third, and fourth beats of the second bar are played as muted string rakes. So with your fretting hand, you want to mute the strings, and with your picking hand, the third bar is exactly the same as the first bar, so we revisit the initial riff that starts on the end of the first beat. And then on the third beat of the final bar, we're doing a quick little hammer-on from the fifth to the eighth fret of the high E string. So here's that riff nice and slow. And once again at full speed. To get the tone for this, I'm using a single coil loaded Shergold Masquerader in the bridge position to get a Telecaster style bite. Got the crunch voice selected on the amp with the EL34 response and a very low gain setting. Second riff we're going to learn is the Leonard Skinner song Sweet Home Alabama. So here's the riff at full speed and then we'll break it down a bit. For this song we're using the D, C and G chords, but we're playing a slight variation on the C. We're playing it as what's called a C add 9, which is like this. It's like a G chord, but it's rooted on the A string. We're playing it as the 3rd fret on the A, the open D and G, and the 3rd fret on the B and E strings. This riff starts with a D chord with a little arpeggiated pattern that starts from a double open D string like so. Then we move into our C add 9 pattern and I'm doing the A string three times but I'm muting the third time and then I'm doing the same picking pattern backwards from the B, G and D strings. Then from the G chord I'm repeating that same pattern where I'm picking the E string which is the third fret of the E string three times but I'm muting the middle one and then I'm playing the open G. So you have that all together nice and slow. First bar ends with a little hammer on pull off lick on the A, D, and G strings. It starts with the open G, followed by a hammer on from the open A to the second fret. Then we've got a hammer on pull off from the open to the two and back again on the D string which lands then on the 2nd fret of the A and a pull off from the 2nd to the open on the G. So here's that deck all together. The 3rd bar is just a repeat of the picking pattern in the 1st bar with the D, C add 9 and G chords 
and then the final bar is an ascending lick on the G string, which starts with an open G, followed by a pull off from the second fret to the open string again, another open string, then a pull off from the fourth fret to the open string, the open D string, and then a bend on the fifth fret of the G up a full tone. <laughs> So here's the riff all together nice and slow. And here's that riff at full speed once again. The original version of the song was recorded on a Strat style guitar in the second position, so you want two single coils, the bridge and the middle position selected at the same time. I'm using the clean bright voice on the amplifier with the gain pushed up quite high and an EL34 response. Third riff we're going to learn is the ACDC track You Shook Me All Night Long. Here's the riff in full. <laughs> This riff uses the G, D and C chords with some quick changes. So it starts off with a full bar of the G. So it's just G on the first beat and that's held for a full four beats. The second bar is some quick changes from the C to the G. Think of this as eighth notes. It's double C, so it's C on the one and, and you hit the G on the two. Then you also hit the C on the three and the G on the four. The third bar is a full bar of the D, so you hit that D on the one and let it ring. Then the fourth bar follows the same rhythm, so one and two, three, four, but this time we're going from the G to the D. That then lands back on the G as the one, which is the start of our riff again. If you're struggling with the quick changes from the G to the C, you can simplify the G chord by playing it just like this on the bottom few strings. This allows you to go back and forth from the C a little easier if you're struggling with that quick change. So use that riff all together, nice and slow. And once again at full speed. The actual studio version of the song isn't quite played as straight as that, but that was a slightly simplified version. The studio version is actually slightly ahead of the beat by an eighth note. This gives the song a little bit more of a push, but if you think about that as being on the beat, it does make it a little bit easier to learn. Otherwise, you're trying to count the one beat as being the and of four, and all the other beats are moved an eighth note forward as well. So just think of it as one, because it makes it a little easier to digest. To get the tone for this song, you want a humbucker guitar with a bridge humbucker selected, and a big, open, overdriven sound. So I'm using the crunch voice with the KT88 response because that's got a very high headroom. Fourth riff we're going to learn is the picked intro for the Guns N' Roses version of Knockin' on Heaven's Door. This is played in E flat tuning so you want to tune all your strings down half a step to E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. You can practice this in standard tuning, but if you want to play along with the track, you're going to need to detune half a step. For this, we're using the G without the second fret on the A string that we talked about at the start of the video, and the D chord as well as the C. This is all picked except for the first chord. Now, the picking pattern for this might seem quite quick straight away. Think of every single beat as being divided into 16th notes, and it makes it a little easier to count. So we're counting 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a, all the way through this pattern. So we start off with a single strum of the G, from the low E to the B string, so don't catch that high E note, and this is going to last for one beat, so four sixteenth notes, 1 E and a, and then we're going to pick backwards, E, B, G, and then hit the B string once again. Then we go over to the D chord. On the third beat, we're going to pick from the lowest note of the D to the highest note. Then on the fourth beat, we're actually going to take the note on the high E string off. So this is now an open string. This makes the chord a D suspended too, but just think of this as an open string being added to the D chord. We're going to pick backwards then E, B, G, and then back to the B. 
So here's that bar all together. Then we come to a full bar on the C chord, but we're still playing 16th notes all the way through. This bar looks a little bit complicated on paper, but don't worry, once you've gone over it nice and slow, it does fall into place. So on the first beat, we're playing the D and G strings open, but then we're hammering on to the second fret of the D. So that's our first two 16th notes, playing the third fret of the A and then the open G. The second beat of this bar, we're picking from the B string backwards, so B, G, D, and then hitting the high E string. On the third beat, we're starting on the D string, so we're going D, G, B, and back to G again. And then on the fourth beat, we're repeating that hammer-on phrase from the first beat. So here's that bar all together. Here's that one all together nice and slow. Once again at full speed. To get this tone I'm using a humbucker guitar on the neck pickup with the clean bright voice and an EL34 response but I've also got some light chorusing going on as well. The final riff we're going to do is Already Gone by the Eagles. Here's how this riff goes. This uses the G, D, and C chords with a little linking phrase in between. So we're starting off with the hit on the G, so it's one, two, and then on the end of two, we come in with this little run here. So that run is straight eighth notes, and three, and four, and, but the four, and is actually the bend up and down. You should also hammer on from the open to the second on the A. This then hits straight into a D chord on the one of the next bar, which lasts for a full bar. Start of the third bar, you hit the C, then you repeat the same lick, but this time starting on the D string. So it's open hammer on two on the D, followed by open and two with a bend on the G. This then hits in the final bar on the C on the one, and then you also hit the C chord again on the end of two, the end of three, and the fourth beat. So that's one, two, and three, and four. So here's that riff nice and slow. And once again at full speed. This riff is actually comprised of a couple of different parts. Obviously the Eagles had three guitar players who all used different types of guitars. You can pretty much guarantee that a Telecaster was used somewhere on that track. So I've gone for my Shergold Masquerader once again with the bridge pickup selected to get that nice Tele twang. I've got the clean warm voice selected on the amp, but I've actually got the gain and the level set all the way up. This will create that sort of loud cranked amp sound. The amps that the Eagles used were often pretty clean, but they were driven hard with volume. So this will get a nice little bit of breakup just at the top end. And I've also got the 6R6 response selected. So there you go, there are five classic riffs and how to dial in some similar tones using the Blackstar Silverline series. Like I said at the start of the video, if you like the tones, please head over to blackstarinsider.co.uk. You can download these patches from there. The links will be in the description below. Please check those out and let us know what you think of them. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out Blackstar Potential on YouTube for more videos like this. And if you're looking for a guitar teacher in your local area, please check out mgrmusic.com. We've got a network of great teachers all over the country just waiting to help you guys out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon.